So first of all, I'm giving a talk here about Ember. That's, uh, that's the topic. I could have, in theory, given a talk just like the Hello World, let me teach you about Ember talk. Um, but I'm going to give that talk tomorrow night at the Ember user group here in Tel Aviv. So if you're interested in just getting a general introduction to Ember in, uh, in general, please come to that, um, assuming there's still space there. And that would be great. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to build an Ember app with Rails. So in particular, um, we don't really do that much work talking about use, building an Ember app with Rails because there's, there's a, a stigma in the JavaScript community that Ember must be coupled to Rails since I work on it, um, and there are some integrations. So we normally stay very, very far away from demonstrating Ember and Rails integration. Um, but we actually do have a pretty cool story there, and I, since I'm here at a Rails conference, I figured, why don't I show that story? Um, so I'm just going to be building a Rails app from the beginning uh, with Ember and showing how that all works. Um, there's a little bit of sadness in the very beginning, and that's because, as I learned uh, a couple weeks ago, there's no way to r build a new Rails 4 app without Turbolinks or, um, yeah, uh, or CoffeeScript. Like, there's no flag that you can pass to Rails new to turn those off. So you have to actually go in and delete a few things. So you'll see me doing that. Um, anybody in here who wants to submit a patch, I suspect unless it has been discussed and intentionally rejected, which I don't believe it to be the case, I suspect a no turbo links or no coffee flag would be accepted. So that would be great, I think, for people who are building Rails applications with JavaScript that does not use turbo links. So uh, let me get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make a new Rails app. So uh, Rails new, can people see that? Should I make it bigger? All right. Uh, and I'm just gonna say minus M, which is a template, and I'm just gonna pass in uh, emberjs.com slash edge template.rb. And basically, this edge template is just uh, going to be using the latest versions of Ember um, from master. Um, what I should show you, if you go to emberjs.com, um, we have a build system here that is a lot like the Chrome build system. So you can basically go get any version. Um, you can get like the canary builds of Ember, Ember data pretty easily. So um, if, if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for you know, more stable or whatever, that's where you should check that out. But if you just run the edge builds or you uh, run Rails G Ember install dash dash head, you'll always get the latest Canary build. So here I am in the Israel thing, um, the Israel repo. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, uh, let me open MacFin. Um, OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have to remove TurboLinks. Um, and a few other things. So I'm going to go into my gem file. I'm going to remove CoffeeScript and TurboLinks and JBuilder, the Omakase stack, pruning it away really quick. Uh, OK, and then I'm going to go into uh, as App Assets JavaScript. And actually, um, I can just show you. If you, This is actually pretty nice how this works now. Uh, that is not very nice. Hold on. I will. Let me shut off. So I was kind of happy, at least, that I got it to yell at me like this. So it basically says, cannot find the file TurboLinks. But then it's, it, this is not that useful. But anyway, so I'm going, I'll go into the application uh, JavaScript, and I'm going to remove the TurboLinks line. And now if I reload, ah, I, of course, have to. OK, so because I wasn't able to, uh, anyway, I'll, so the first thing I'll do is I'll run uh, Ember uh, bootstrap, which is basically Rails G, Ember bootstrap. And then I'll run Rails G, Ember install, dash dash head, and that's basically going to download the latest canaries of everything. So, and you can see that it's putting them in, uh, it has the, the, down, the production ver versions, et cetera. So now if I reload and restart the server, Now it says, hello, welcome to Ember.js. So great, so we're, we're off to the races. So uh, now the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to um, generate a new, a new resource in Rails. So I'm just going to make a new resource called story, and it's going to have a title, string, body, text. And if you look at what comes out here, you'll see that it has actually done a few more things. It's actually created an Ember model for me, um, Ember view, et cetera. So um, let me go into MacVim again. Uh, you can see that it added a bunch of stuff over here. Um, and, but also, if I was to go into, uh, if 
I go into the router, you'll see stuff is there, right? So basically, we have we have an initial setup. Um, so I'm just going to run rake db migrate here, and now I have my regular migrations. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and actually update my template. So we have an application template, and the application template is basically just like the application template in Rails. It's just a layout for your entire application, and that's what's showing this over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that, and I'm going to say h1, you know, my stories, slash h1, and you'll see that that worked. So uh, another thing that I, that I just want to call out, so I'm going to be using the Ember Inspector for the Rest of this uh, rest of this tutorial. So you can see here that there is the view tree, and you can see the application is here. Um, you can look at whatever routes. So obviously it's quite minimal at this point, but you can basically see that we've already started to get some some stuff going. So the next thing that I want to do is I I want to uh, actually create a place to show some stories. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to make I'm going to use a, a generator here. So I'm going to generate a new route called stories, and I'm going to generate a new template called stories. Sorry, and I am going to go into the router. So the router again is sort of similar to to the Rails router, and I'm going to say this dot resource stories. Um, important to note, unlike in Rails, when you say this dot resource, it doesn't generate a whole bunch of routes. It basically generates only one at a time. So uh, we're generating a resource called stories, and if I was to go into uh, my stories template, I'll just delete what it came with, and I'll just say h2 uh, stories. This is going to contain my list of stories. Um, now, if I was to reload the page and go to slash stories, you'll see that I'm a I actually I actually have the stories route and I'm inside of it, but it didn't actually show anything. And this is basically because, just like in Rails, if you want to actually put something inside of the application template, you have to specify where it should go. So in Rails, you do that with yield. In uh, Ember, you do that with outlet. So you say outlet, and that's basically saying here is where you should put my child template. And now if I reload, you can see that it worked. So we basically have, we've created a new route called stories, and when we navigate it to with slash stories, it will work. Great. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to, base, we want to tell Ember how, what, how it should make requests to the server. And what we're going to do, so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, Israel.applicationAdapter equals ds.rest adapter. And the rest adapter is basically just a built-in adapter that comes with uh, that comes with Ember, Ember data, and it basically is designed to work with Rails-like servers. So if I make if I refresh now, um, nothing has happened yet. And that's because we basically haven't said, okay, so now we have, we're going to the stories, uh, we're going to the stories route and we need to say what model we should be fetching. So so far we're going to the stories route. We're, Ember knows to put the stories template on the screen, but we haven't said anything about what model to use yet. So let's go into our route object here. And um, this, a route in Ember t takes on some of the responsibilities of a, of a controller in Rails. I would, if I were you, I wouldn't try to draw too many parallels between these objects because they're not really super analogous. So a route in Ember has a model hook, and basically what this model hook does is it allows you to specify what model we should be using for this template. So uh, Basically, what we have here is we know we're in, we've put the stories template on the screen. So if we go here, we can see that we have the stories template on the screen, but we don't actually have a model backing it yet. But we do want to back it by some model, and in this case, the model that we want to back it by is going to be um, is going to be all of the uh, all, uh, an array of all of the stories. So we're going to say this dot store dot find story, and that's basically going to say I would like to get all of my stories. Now, if I reload this. There's going to be a problem, and the problem is that we, if we scroll up here, we'll see that it says the problem is that stories was not found. So we have to go implement stories in Rails, right? So I'll just go into our Rails controller, go into stories controller, def index, render JSON, story dot all, and I should just note that this all this is actually going through the uh, active model serializers that are built in by default with the Ember Rails gem. So it's automatically serializing things um, using whatever attributes, and you can learn more about that if you want to do more advanced serialization in the future. But for now, it basically does a pretty simple pass through. So we now we now have uh, a stories route. We say we want to find all the stories, and now if I reload it, I'm not going to get an exception anymore. But of course, I have no stories yet. So let me let me open up the Rails console. 
Let's start by just adding a single story. Story.create title Rails is omakase. Body omakase is so delicious. Okay, so we've created a story. And now if I reload, again, we're not putting it on the screen, but if I go into my data panel, you can see that we have, the, we, we have this object. You can see what's going on. So we can see, we can see that, we have, that it started to load some data. And I, I just want to say that I think it's pretty awesome how little code you have to write to actually make that work. So the next thing that we're going to do is we want to actually use that data and put it on the screen in some way. So I'm just going to make a UL over here. And base, Ember has already set the backing model for this template to be the thing that we, the array of stories. So we can basically, we can just iterate over it. So we say each, that's just iterating over the model for this template, which we specified in the route. And we can just say title slash li. And if I reload and everything goes well, we can see that we, that, that has worked. Great. So the next thing that I want to do, so, so obviously that's fine, but we might want to actually see the individual blog posts. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to the console here, and I'm just going to generate a couple more routes. So I'm going to have an individual story route, and I'm going to have a template for an individual story. And we're basically going to do a similar thing here. So the first thing is I need to go into the router, and I, I need to say that we want to have a resource for an individual story. And we specify the path as being stories slash story underscore ID. Uh, and if I go back, uh, if I go back into story, uh, sorry, if I go back into story.handlebars, let me just nuke this. And I'm just going to make an H2 that contains the title of the model that we'll eventually specify how to get. And I'm going to put the body in here. Slash div. OK. So the only thing that we have left to do is we need to actually specify how we go and get that story from the server. So I'm just going to implement the model hook again. This time, we're going to get a set of params. So before, obviously, there's no params for slash stories. But for story, there were the params that we specified in the route. Um, so I can go return this.store.find story again. But this time, it's going to be params.story underscore ID. And if I now reload the page and navigate to story slash one, you can see that it worked. Now, there's one thing that I want to show, which is that because this pattern over here is so common, it's actually the default. I can just remove this model hook. And basically, Ember knows to do that. Ember does not know how to. Ah, so reloading. OK, so if I start from stories and, go, and then go to stories one, it actually works because it was already loaded as part of the original request. The problem, if I try to reload the page here, is, is simply that we have, not implemented the, uh, we have not implemented the method yet, the show method in our Rails controller. So let's go back, so you can see that there's a 404 when it's trying to find stories one. So let's go into our Rails controller again, stories, def show, and we're just going to go render JSON story.find params ID. And notice that we're not writing any of the code that actually makes requests to Rails. Basically, the Ember REST adapter knows how to make requests that look sane to Rails. So now when we reloaded, everything continued to work. Now, one thing that I think is important is, unlike in Rails, so here we, ha we basically, um, actually, let me first make a link between these two things before I, uh, I go a little bit further. So let me, go into, uh, let me go back into our template, into our stories template. And instead of just having a list of all the items, we're just going to make a link to each of the individual stories. So there's a helper called link to. So pound just indicates that it's a block helper. We're going to link to an individual story. And we're going to pass in as the, as the model that we want to link to the current thing that we're iterating over. Um, so this should be a little bit familiar if you're, uh, if you're a Rails user. We're basically linking to a story. And we're passing in the, the model that we want to link to. Now if I reload, you can see that we got a link here. And if I hover over this, uh, I can probably make it appear. You can see that, it's, that the URL appears. And if I was to open it up in a new tab, of course, everything will work. So great, so we have a link. Now, one thing that's a little bit different, I think, about client-side applications is that unlike in Rails, where it makes total sense that every single time you click to get a whole new thing, in client-side applications, it's very common to want to nest these things. So basically, when I click on Rails' omakase, I may want the blog post to appear below it. Or if I was doing something fancy, it might be a sidebar or something to the right of it. Um, so Ember handles this pattern by allowing you to do nesting in the router. So what we can do here is we can just say, 
I want to nest something inside of the stories route, and I call it the story route. And if I was to reload slash story slash one again, you'll see that it's not working. Um, actually, hold on. So th there's a couple reasons why it's not working. The first one is that I don't need to repeat stories over here. So I need to, because it's already nested inside of there. So that's great. Um, the other problem is that we need to, because we're nesting again, we need to actually tell Ember where to put the next nested thing. The same way that we would put, we put the outlet on the top level, we need to put an outlet on the bottom level. So Rails doesn't have this issue because Rails doesn't support nested templates, but you can imagine that there would be nested, temp nested layouts with nested yield um, inside of Rails. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the, uh, into the stories template, and we're going to say, if there's anything nested inside of here, here is where it should go. Right here. And now if I reload, you can see that Rails' omakase is there. Now there's a little bit of an annoying thing here, which is that if I just click here, there's nothing below it telling me what to do. And Rail Ember handles this problem by allowing you to specify a template called index for any particular template, and then that will be the default uh, thing that gets slotted in inside of that template. So we're gonna create a template here, uh, another directory called stories. And inside of stories, we're gonna, put, we're gonna create the index template, index.handlebars. And we're just gonna say p, please select a story slash p, and now it's going to say, please select a story, and if I click Rails' omakase, it will work. If I click the back button, it shows me, please select the story again. Okay, so now, uh, so that's great. Now, the next thing that I want to do is, sorry, the next thing that I want to do is implement a mechanism for creating a completely new story. So what we're going to do is we're going to want that to go to stories slash new. Right, but of course we haven't implemented story slash new yet. Um, one thing I should point out, if you go to the routes pane, all the naming conventions for Ember are here. So if, you're, if you have a, you know, a route named stories and you want to know what you should name the route or what you should name the controller, that's all here. Obviously the generators take care of that as well. Okay, so uh, the next thing is I want to implement a new, uh, be able to create a new story. So I'm going to just use the generators again. So Rails, G, Ember template, we're going to say, uh, stories slash new, and I'm also going to create a route for stories slash new. Okay, great. So now, uh, now I just need to go into the router and install and add it. So again, it's going to be nested. This time it's going to be a route. Um, the TLDR of this is that uh, you, wouldn't want, you wouldn't want the name new to be global here, so it basically becomes, the name of the route becomes stories slash new instead of just new. And obviously, you may have new in multiple different places. Okay, so anyway, so we, we've just created a new route called stories new, um, and we have this stories new template. So let's just go make it say something like make a new story, just to make sure everything is working here. And if I go to stories new and reload, you can see that that template was rendered. Okay, so now we have a template here called stories new. It's nested inside of the list, the, the full list of stories. And now what I want to do is I want to uh, I want to make it have a, a model. So what should the model be for a new template? Well, pretty much the same as it would be in Rails. It should just be a new instance of a story. So what we'll do is we'll go into the uh, stories new route, and we will implement the model hook here, and we're just going to return this.store.create record story. Okay, and let me go into the let me go into the template, and instead of saying make a new story, let's make a form, and we'll make a P. We'll say input type, e type equals text, value equals uh, title, slash P, and we'll say uh, text area value equals body. Okay, so now we're making a new form. We need a button over here, and that button is going to say uh, create. Okay, so now if I was to go here, we'll see that we have, we can create a new story, but obviously it doesn't do anything. There's also another small issue here, which is that you can see that the new story that we created is already listed in the list over here. So sometimes that's a nice thing, right? If I start typing in like the parlay letter, it starts to appear, but I think in some other cases you may not want that. In some other cases you may want it to be limited to just the things that have actually been already created. Um, so what, we're, what we can do here is we can basically just go back to the stories route, and here we were just saying give me all the stories that you know about. I'll just kick off a request to, to the stories and then I'll return a filtered uh, list 
So it's going to be filtered off of all the stories, and it takes a story, and then I'm just going to say return not story.get is new. And that's basically saying only include the stories that are not new. So what we're basically able to do here is just uh, restrict the, the model. So now if I start typing the parallel letter, nothing happens. Um, but there's another small issue here, which is that we haven't actually hooked up the form to do anything. So the next thing that we need to do is go into our, uh, sorry, our new template, and we'll give the form an action. So we can say it has an action. The action's going to be create. That action's going to take the current model that we passed it, and it's going to say on equals submit. So that means whenever the user submits the form, whether by clicking the button or hitting the enter key, it will trigger this behavior. OK. So now let me go in here, and I type in the parlay letter. I hit enter, and we get a problem. Nothing handled the event create. Well, that's because I haven't implemented the create action yet. So we're in the uh, we're in the new the story's new template. So the create action will be handled on the story's new route. So let's go in here. We basically just create a little bunch of actions, and we created it. We had an action called create. It's going to take whatever we passed in. So in this case, it's going to take a story. And what we're going to do is we're going to say story dot save, and then we're going to say this dot transition two stories, and that's basically just a, a redirection, basically, back to the original stories. So let me, uh, let me reload. Now if I say the parlay letter and hit enter, well, it redirected us back successfully, but we can see here that we did not implement the uh, create method on our Rails controller. So there's actually a couple things we want to do here. The first one is we actually want to not redirect until the story is actually successfully saved. So let's go in and we'll just... Um, We'll just chain this transition in here. So here's a sad JavaScript thing. So we got to pull that out. And now, and now if I, and now if I say the parlay letter and hit enter, you can see that it didn't do anything. We may want to actually show a spinner that shows that something is, is loading. So I'll just throw in, in our new template, I'll say, uh, if if is saving, so that as soon as you save it, it's going to start. It's the, that flag gets turned on. Say, put a p here that says saving record. So the parlay letter, we hit enter. Well, it saved. It saved very quickly, and then it failed. So. Let's go back. Uh, I can continue to do error handling in a similar way. I could say if is error, et cetera, but I'm not, I have seven minutes left, so I'm going to move on. So let me go back into the stories controller, and let's implement uh, create. I'm going to I'm going to use strong parameters here, so I'll just uh, make a little private section here. I'll have def story, and I'll just uh, say params story dot permit title and body, and we'll just say uh, render json story dot create story All right so now we've implemented our create method I'm gonna make it sleep for a second okay so now if I impl if I say the parlay letter and I hit enter you can see that it's a saving and then eventually it will successfully go through and make it through into the into the list great um, I'm also gonna add in a link here onto onto stories just to allow you to, that says uh, p link to stories.new, create a new story, slash p. OK, great. So we can create a new story. We can go to an individual story. Now, what if we want to support editing? So editing is going to look quite the same. By the way, one thing I should just call out, I'm not actually making a lot of use of the data binding facilities in Ember here. And that's because I'm specifically focusing on the interaction with Rails. If I had an hour, I could probably do both. But um, in 30 minutes, I'm really focusing on the ways that you can uh, easily interact with Rails. If you're thinking, what's the point of this? I could have done this in Rails easily. That's only half the story here. OK. So. Um, Linking to stories new, creating a new story, and now what we want to do is we want to support editing. So I'm going to go back to our, go back here. I'm going to make basically make a new thing, and this time it's going to be story slash edit, right? We're basically allowing you to edit a story, um, and then I'm also going to make a template for story edit. Okay, uh, we got to go back into our router, 
and in our router, we're, we're going to nest inside a story. So basically, we want to nest inside a story because we're going to share the same story ID, and we're going to put this um, editing UI inside of the UI for showing an individual story. Um, so, and we're going to say this dot route edit. Okay. And let me go into story, and say edit route. And sorry, let me go into this guy over here, and I'll delete this, and we'll. For now, I'll just copy everything from new over. Don't worry, there are nicer ways to do this, which I will get to momentarily. So we're going to change the action to update. We're going to change this button over here to update. But otherwise, it's the same form, right? So the next question that we have to answer, so we have a template on the screen, is what model are we showing? And because we're nested inside of the, because we're nested inside of the story route, we can basically just implement the model hook as as copying over that same route, that, that same model. So we implement the model hook here for the edit, uh, the edit route, and we basically just say return this dot model for story. It's basically just going to grab whatever the model was in the story route, which was our parent. So I can jump back to the router over here. You can see that this edit is nested inside of the story. So whenever we're inside of a, whenever we're inside of this edit template, we're guaranteed to already have a story that came from the parent, and we can basically just continue passing that along. So um, that model will be there. And let me go into the story template real quick, and I will just add in a new link. Link to story.edit. And then we'll say edit this story slash link to. OK. So now if I click edit the story, Nothing happened, and perhaps if you've been uh, if you've been paying attention the whole time, you will notice that I did not put in an outlet, which I need to put in if I want to nest something inside of here, right? So now if I edit, you can see that that's there. And now here's the first time where data binding comes into play. If I start editing things, you'll see that it appears in other parts of the thing. So parlaying all day long. Now if I click update, you can see okay, I didn't handle the event update. Great. So let me go into let me go into my edit route. And we'll implement actions, update. It takes a story. And we're just going to say story.save. Not going to transition anywhere. So we're editing the story. If I change the parlay letter, I hit bang. OK, we see, again, we have not actually implemented that method on the Rails side. So So we'll go update. We'll say render JSON story.find params ID. I'll just tap story s.update attributes story. So we're just going to update that guy. We're going to render the JSON back out. So now if I hit bang and update, you can see that it was successful at saving it. And you can also see if I go into data. Go here, we can see that we have it, right? Um, we could actually have done all that work from the console, so I could have said $E, that's just happened when I click the envelope, dot set, title, parlay. We can see it updates, and then if I was to say $E dot save, basically it will go to the server, and now if I reload, you can see that it will have succeeded. Great. Now I want to implement one more feature, which is just deletion. And so deletion we can do without implementing any more routes. So I'm just going to go back to our stories handler. And I'm going to say, I'm going to make a new button. It's going to have an action of delete. It's going to take the current model. And I'll just put an x there, slash button. And now I'll go into the, uh, go into the stories route. We'll implement an actions over here. We'll say delete. It's going to take a story. And we're just going to go story.destroy record, which is basically delete and save at the same time. Ah, scumbag JavaScript. So now if I go and click on that, we can say, OK, we didn't implement delete in Rails. Let's go do that. def destroy story.find params id dot destroy, and we'll just return a head of 204. And 
and it worked, great. So I'm basically out of time. I wanna just close with one thing, which is, uh, again, I actually, obviously there was a lot of things that were the same here between Rails and Ember. Um, things were kind of one-to-one, -one. that was kind of my point, which is that if you're, what you're doing is similar on both sides, um, you can get a lot of mileage, Ember will basically know, know how to deal with it. But I think as you build up an application, what ends up happening is you don't have all these screens that are just like one-to-one -one CRUD operations. That would be a really boring Ember app. Um, so you end up building up a more traditional MVC application that would have been an interesting thing for me to demo if I was just gonna demo building an MVC application. But you get all the same benefits of having a model that you can save, that you can load, that uh, having local routing that you could transition between all of it, which interacts pretty well with Rails without, any, without a lot of extra work. Um, so yeah, I, th I think in general, I, we spent a lot of time making it so that the Ember side of it is pretty simple and pretty, in pretty intuitive and relatively um, not orders of magnitude harder than doing an equivalent thing in Rails. And I hope what I showed today is that once you get your hands on what's, what the primitives are in, in Ember, it's pretty easy to build, build up something that, that shouldn't take you that much more time than doing the equivalent thing in Rails, but with uh, a lot of the benefits of client side. So thank you very much.